Hello and welcome to Flearn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flearn.com where we make learning fun. Welcome to the third and final video in our series on selections. I really hope you guys have been enjoying this so far. Give us a big like and if you want to get more free videos from Flearn, just click on that subscribe button. Make sure to click on that little bell icon. So we've gone over simple selections in our first video showing you all the basic selection tools and how powerful they can be. In our second video in this series, we showed you more advanced selection tools like cutting out your subject. And now we're gonna show you how to refine those selections and make them really work for you, including how to cut out hair. We got a great video for you. Let's jump into Photoshop. So here's our sample images. We got a beautiful couple that are having a great time and we're gonna use this for a wedding invitation. First thing I need to do is grab my move tool. Let's hit V for the move tool. I'm gonna click and drag from one image right over to the other one. I just got this wedding invitation from Adobe Stock. Let's hit F for full screen. Don't forget, you guys are actually gonna be able to download this PSD for free on flurn.com. Just follow the link right down below. So the first thing I need to do is extend my image because I want this to be like kind of over here and interact with my subjects, but as you can see, it's just kind of going off the screen. So we're gonna use our crop tool. C for the crop tool. Now with our crop tool, I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag this up and we're gonna give us some more information here on the right hand side as well. Again, for our wedding invitation, let's go ahead and hit that big checkbox up there. And we're looking pretty good, but we don't really have any information here on the right hand side of our image. Well, selections are going to help us out with that as well. Believe it or not, we're gonna use the marquee tool and then another feature in Photoshop called content aware fill. So let's grab our rectangular marquee to make a selection over the area we want to fill. There we go, as you can see that's selected and I'm here on my layer zero. Now we're gonna go to edit and then down here to content aware fill. This uses information from our photo to figure out what to fill these new pixels with. And when you have a simple background, it tends to work pretty well. So let's go to content aware fill. We have a new dialog box over here. This green area is where it's actually going to sample from. And then here we have a little preview of what it's going to fill in this area. Now I can use my little cursor here to add or remove information from the sample. So I'm just gonna simply paint away the hair because I don't necessarily want any information from our subjects. I just want it to be filled with a sky. You know, we want like uh, just beautiful blue skies to fill all the way to the right hand side. So we have a really nice background for our wedding invitation. Just takes a second, kind of thinks about it, but that's basically all there is to it. Let's go ahead and hit OK, and I can output this. I'm gonna just put, in this case, to a new layer. That way I can turn this layer off or on at any time. Let's hit OK. Check that out. Controller Command D, and we did that with selections, by the way. Super cool. Uh, we can turn this on and off, and we've just extended our background in a really cool way. So now we're ready to start putting in this image for our wedding invitation. But again, I want this to be behind our subjects. I want it to interact. It's got to be a lot more interesting than this, right? So we need a way to select out our subjects and then place them in front of this wedding invitation. So back here, we're just gonna make our invitation invisible real quick. We're gonna go back to our layer zero with our subjects. Let's just call this subjects. There we go. And we'll just call this sky. And we'll just call this invitation. There we go. Let's go ahead and click on our subjects. Now, in our last video, we showed you how to use the object selection tool as well as select subject to cut out your subject. So let's see how it does. First, we're gonna go with the object selection tool because it's a brand new feature within Photoshop. Object selection tool, we wanna make sure that object finder is checked. And I like this little icon right here that tells us what we can actually select. And as you can see, it's thinking. So in this case, it's actually done a pretty good job. You can see uh, we've highlighted in blue. You can change this highlight color. Let's just go to green so we can actually see what it's, <laughs> what it's gonna do. Let's go ahead and reload that. It's a little bit difficult to see. But in this case, you can see, let's just turn this both on. We can select both our subjects. So I'm gonna click here. There we go to select our subject on the right and then hold shift and then click here to select our subject on the left. Now, this is looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and load this into a layer mask and see how it looks. So I have my subject layer already selected, fantastic. I'm gonna click on my layer mask icon and we'll see how this looks. Now, in this case, what we actually wanna do is have a layer with our subjects and a layer with the background. So we just need to duplicate this layer. I'm gonna click and drag this to the new layer icon. There we go. And then on this layer mask, I'm gonna hit Shift Delete, which is the keyboard shortcut for the fill dialog. And we're just gonna fill that layer mask completely with white. 
there we go. So this can be our background. Let's just call this BG for background. This will be our subjects, and I want to put them above the invitation. Okay, kind of similar to what we did in our last video in this segment. All right. So here you can see, yeah, we're starting to look a little bit better, right? We have our invitation here. We have the sky that we added right behind there, and then we have our original subjects there. So starting from the background, we have our sky replacement, or enhancement rather, extension, our invitation, and then our new subjects. But as we can see, the <laughs> selection doesn't really look that great, right? You wouldn't want to publish this out to all your friends and family. It looks like uh, not quite complete. So we need to continue to refine this layer mask and that's where our select and mask tool comes in. So let's go ahead and show you how that works. I'm gonna click here right on my layer mask and then we're gonna to go to select and then down here to select and mask. Now select and mask is the go-to tool for working with your selections in Photoshop. If they have a little bit of a jagged edge, if they're too big, if they're too small, you can change all that within select and mask. So here are our tools. Up here on the very top left, we have our tools that will add to or remove from our selection. For instance, I can click here and simply add to my selection. It's going to add more. I can hit Control or Command Z to undo that. And then right underneath it, we have our Refine Edge tool. And this is really where things come in handy. This is for refining things like hair. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit, Control or Command Plus. And I'm just gonna simply click and draw right over this hair and it knows the difference between the hair and the background. Look at that. Isn't this amazing? I'm simply just painting right over the hair and it's refining this selection and giving me professional results, like literally just clicking and dragging over there. Okay, we can see it blends perfectly with the image from before. Okay, and we can go, actually that looks fantastic. So our refine edge tool in this case is doing really everything we need it to. And there's a lot more examples of how to use this tool because we have things like edge detection built in and even some global refinements, which we're gonna show you in just a second. So in this case, I gotta say that looks pretty dang good. Now, you have a different, couple different ways to view your image. You can see what it looks like on an overlay. And in this case, we can see my selection of our other subjects hair didn't look that good. So I can just use the refine edge and we can see what this is going to look like if I refine the edge of his hair as well. I recommend using a relatively small brush about the size of the object you want to actually refine the edge. But as you can see, the tool works incredibly well getting rid of the background. I will say this tool works better when the backgrounds are more simple in Photoshop, which uh, makes sense, right? <laughs> the easier image that you throw at this, the better it's going to do. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and put this back on layers and we are looking Great. So I'm going to output this directly to our layer mask, which simply updates the existing layer mask that we have. So let's hit OK. And there we have. Let's just change this to subject and then we'll just call this cutout. Fantastic. So now this invitation that we have, which I spelled wrong. There we, there we go. This invitation can just slide in directly behind our subjects and we get something that's really like kind of elevated and didn't take that long to do. So now that we've used select and mask to cut out our subjects accurately, let's use the same tool to give our wedding invitation rounded corners. So we're gonna go ahead and hold control or command and click here on the invitation itself, which is turning it into a selection. Now that it's a selection, let's click on our layer mask icon, which just makes it a layer mask the exact same side of the wedding invitation itself. I wanna give it rounded corners. So we're gonna introduce some feathering and some smoothing. We're gonna do that on the layer mask. So let's click here on the layer mask. As you can see, we've selected around the layer mask for our invitation. We're gonna to go to select and then down here to select and mask. There we go. Now I have a few different ways of viewing this. Let's go ahead and view this on black so we can see exactly what we're doing. There we go. And I'm gonna go into my global refinements and we're gonna to start to take a look at our edge. Again, I want this to be a rounded edge. Now we're gonna start off by bringing up our feathering which simply softens that edge and makes it a little bit smoother. I'm gonna bring up smoothing as well. There we go. And as I bring this up a little bit, you're gonna see it's gonna kind of round out that edge. And then I'm gonna bring up our contrast as well. And that's just gonna make that edge a little bit sharper. There we go. So as you can see, bringing that contrast up 
basically allows me to bring in some more crispness to that edge. There we go. And I'm just going to simply bring our feathering down just a little bit. And this is going to allow us to create a little bit of a more smooth edge. There we go. I think that's looking fantastic. I can shift my edge in or out as well. I can move it in and I think that actually starts to look a little bit better. Now, of course, in this case, I'm just doing this with a wedding invitation, but you can do this with people or objects as well. If you find your selections are too far out or too far into your subject, you can simply move them and soften those edges and smooth them at any time. Here in my global refinements, I'm gonna go ahead and close that down. And in our output settings, we're just gonna update this directly to the layer mask that it's on right now and hit okay. And now, as you can see, I have a nice rounded edge for my wedding invitation, just adding a little bit more crispness detail into our image. Now let's get into a few tools you can use to modify your selection. So we're gonna go ahead and zoom back into our wedding invitation and turn it into a selection by holding control or command and clicking here on the layer mask. As you can see, we have a very accurate selection right out to the very edge. Now I'm gonna create a new layer on top of this and I want my selection to grow or expand a little bit. To do this, we're gonna go into our selection menu. Let's go to select and we're gonna go down to our modify tab and we have all of these options, border, smooth, expand, contract, and feather. Now a lot of these were available to us in select and mask, but we can also get to them through this tool. Now I wanna add a little bit of a stroke around our wedding invitation. So we're gonna to go to expand. I'm just going to make the selection a little bit larger. Let's go ahead and click on that and we're going to have the option, I'm gonna choose 10 pixels and we're gonna hit okay. So now we've taken our selection and expanded it out just a little bit, in fact, by 10 pixels. So I wanna add a little bit of a stroke to the outside of this area. So what we're gonna do, this is gonna be pretty cool here. We're actually going to create a new layer, okay? And I wanna fill the outside of this with white. So I'm gonna go to select, we're gonna to go to inverse, and then I'm gonna to go to edit, and then fill, and we're gonna to choose to fill this with white. So it's gonna choose everything else and fill it with white. Now, check this out. We're gonna go back to select. I'm gonna inverse the selection again. So it's just selecting inside of the invitation and I'm gonna expand this selection again. So we'll go to select, modify, and then we're gonna to go to expand and I'm gonna give it another 10 pixels. Pretty cool. Now I'm gonna inverse this selection again and delete it. So we're gonna to go to select, inverse, there we go. And then just click on the delete icon and there we go. We now have a 10 pixel stroke on the outside of our wedding invitation that fits perfectly around the entire image. Now, obviously there are so many different ways to do these sort of things in Photoshop. I just wanna show you the power of selections. And to finish things off, we're gonna show you how to use quick masks in Photoshop, which are a very interesting way of editing your selections as pixels, including things like adding filters to those quick masks. So to do this, first we're gonna start by making a selection. I'm gonna hold control or command and click on this invitation to turn this into a selection, as you can see. Now I'm on a new layer and we're gonna go ahead and click on Q for our quick mask. Now a quick mask will turn a selection into editable pixels. For instance, if I were to grab my brush tool and start painting around my image and then hit Q again, look at that. The area that I painted actually now turns into part of my selection. Let's go ahead and hit undo a couple times. We can do more cool things than just paint on your selection. You can actually apply things like blurs. So I'm gonna go to filter, we're gonna go to blur, and I'm gonna go to Gaussian blur. And I'm actually applying a Gaussian blur now. Let's just make this a little bit larger. There we go, something like that's looking pretty good. Hit okay, and then hit Q again. And now exactly what we saw is actually applied to that blur. So check this out, right under the invitation, I'm gonna go ahead and make a curves adjustment layer. Now the cool thing is, again, because we had a selection active, it automatically loads that selection into the layer mask. And I'm just gonna go ahead and click right here on my adjustment layer and just bring that up and make it a little bit brighter. Make it look like we have a little glow behind the wedding invitation. Again, we did this by selecting the actual invitation itself, hitting Q for the quick mask, and then applying a Gaussian blur. Gaussian blur to a selection. How cool is that? And then we just loaded that selection into a curves adjustment layer. And then we have our fantastic result with a little blur behind there. We can go even one step further. I'm gonna create a new layer. We're gonna hit Q for the quick mask. You can see I'm in quick mask mode. This is in fact uh, highlighted. And we're just gonna go ahead and draw something. There we go. So I'm drawing with my quick mask. We'll just call it 
Charlotte and Daniel. There we go. That's Charlotte and Daniel. I'm going to hit Q for my quick mask again. And then look at that. What I just drew with my quick mask is now signatures. Okay. I'm going to go ahead to a solid color fill layer. Let's hit OK. If it's the opposite of what you want, just hit Control or Command I. Double click here on my color. We'll just give it that same dark color and move this around and go ahead and zoom out. And there we have it. We just added signatures through quick masks. And let's go ahead and turn our background glow on. How beautiful is that F for full screen? All of this done with advanced selection and refinements of our selections. Thanks so much for watching this series on selections. If you'd like to see more quick series like this, let me know in a comment down below. We'll make sure to create them for you. Again, click that subscribe button. We'll send you free Photoshop tutorials every single week. Thanks again, and I'll flirt you later. Bye everyone.